JBN will keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Hi, guys. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and to share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Two people shot, one fatally, in Royal Flat Bar. A distrucky was shot dead and a woman wounded at a bar in Royal Flat, Manchester, on Sunday night. Police in the deceased as Davion Anderson, 31, otherwise called DJ Dippo, a resident of Royal Flat. A police report said about 7.54 p.m., Anderson was among patrons at a bar when they were attacked by unknown assailants who opened fire on Anderson and a 36-year-old woman. The injured people were taken to hospital where Anderson was pronounced dead and the woman admitted. Gun seized in St. Elizabeth, two men arrested. Two men were arrested by the St. Elizabeth police following the seizure of an illegal gun on Sunday morning. They were arrested on suspicion of possession of a prohibited weapon and unauthorized possession of ammunition. The police report that about 3.30 a.m., cops were in patrol along the Brace River Main Road when a Toyota Fielder motor car was signaled to stop. The driver complied. The car was searched. And according to the police, a Smith & Wesson 9mm pistol affixed with a magazine containing 13 rounds of 9mm cartridges was found between the front seats. The occupants were taken into custody. Their names have been withheld pending further investigation. Jamaica will become like Haiti if PMP doesn't form next government, says MP Aspirant. People's National Party PMP Aspirant for Centre Northeastern Dr. Ryan Simpson says Jamaica's at risk of becoming like Haiti if the opposition doesn't form the next government. Simpson, in addressing the party's Belfield Divisional Conference in Manchester on Sunday night, suggested that Jamaica is at risk of descending into unrest. The problem is there's money in Jamaica, but only a few people are benefiting from the money. Only a handful of people are actually experiencing are beneficiaries of the wealth that is in Jamaica, he said. Sales going up all over the place. The problem is there is money in Jamaica, but only a few people are, are benefiting from the money. Only a handful of people are, are, getting, are, are actually experiencing our beneficiaries of the wealth that is in Jamaica. So that what you have is a big disparity between the rich and the poor. I feel that Jamaica, if, if the People's National Party don't win the next general election, Jamaica is going to be the next Haiti. Mark my words. The conference was held in support of Council Maria Mitchell, PNP Belfield Division. PNP demands answers after illegal entry of 218 Indians on charter flight. Concerns are being raised about the strength of Jamaica's border security after an apparent smuggling operation was uncovered involving Indian nationals passing through the country. The group arrived on a chartered flight which traveled through Dubai and Egypt accompanied by German crew members and at least one French national. Shadow Foreign and Regional Affairs Minister Dr. Angela Brown Burke raised the alarm after immigration authorities denied entry to 218 Indian nationals who arrived on a chartered flight to Jamaica on Friday. According to sources, the aircraft, a white and blue Airbus A340, which is registered in Germany, remains at Kingston's Norman Manley International Airport. In light of this development, Dr. Brown Burke is demanding immediate clarity from the government on the matter. This shows just how vulnerable we are if uh, the one border over which we have control becomes as porous as others, then we would be in serious trouble. You know, we want to know the origin, destination, and apparent purpose of the flight. You know, the identity of the individuals or organizations responsible for chartering the flight. Why the flight was allowed to land in Jamaica without proper clearance. Why standard immigration and customs procedures were not followed. Where are the 218 persons who were on board? What is to be done about their continued presence in Jamaica? And what measures are being taken by the JCF to ensure the safety and security of the Jamaican public? Many of us remember what happened in COVID-19, where Jamaicans were held at sea and prevented from coming into Jamaica. We have seen recently with the Haitians who were hastily returned to a war-torn Haiti. But here we have 218 persons coming into Jamaica without the proper protocols being followed. We see a difference in treatment of the three different cases. 
Secondly, last year, I think it was, the fans had a similar situation um, with, some, um, with a flight, just as in this one, and those individuals remained on the tarmac for four days. We want to know why it is, in this case, Jamaica did not follow those protocols. Law enforcement sources on Sunday said that the charter airline did not state it was arriving in Jamaica on Friday. Now there was a passenger manifest sent ahead of its arrival as is required, but civil aviation officials allowed the aircraft to land. Checks revealed that the charter had no arrangement to take the passengers back to their destination, which arose the suspicion of authorities. Sources have confirmed that the Indians are currently at the Norman Manley International Airport in Kingston, awaiting flight clearance to depart. However, it is not clear if all the Indians who arrived on Friday are at the airport. It is understood that some of the passengers, although denied entry, were permitted to go to the Rock Hotel in downtown Kingston, where they are officially under police guard. These passengers are said to have been traveling to Nicaragua and Canada. The government is yet to issue a statement on the development. Police crack robbery spree targeting fast food businesses. The police have made a major breakthrough into the investigation into a string of robberies targeting fast food franchises in sections of the corporate area. It is understood that Burger King, Popeyes, KFC and the Chicken and Tings are among the restaurants that have been hit. A man believed to be the mastermind behind the spate of robberies was shot and killed during a shooting incident in downtown Kingston approximately two weeks ago. The deceased has been identified as Stafford Brown. Head of the St. Andrew Central Police Division, Senior Superintendent Marlon Nesbeth, says three people are in custody in relation to the robberies. Since the latter part of last year, corporate era police divisions have gotten reports of robberies committed against fast food franchises. The police responding to these over time have made some inroads into the incidents and presently four persons as perpetrators have been impacted. The alleged mastermind to these incidents, one Stafford Brown, was shot and injured and subsequently died in hospital. The three other persons are in custody and are expected to face the courts in regards to these robberies. The fact is our impact should see a lessening of these type of activities based on the persons who are involved and who are at this time impacted and as we continue to pursue others. The franchises themselves, we have met with security persons connected to them and there are some amount of target hardening efforts that should help to prevent this type of activities going forward. So we will continue to work with the partners around this to ensure that this is eradicated or minimized significantly in the future. What we have picked up, which is significant, is that there is a connection across spaces in corporate area, more so the Kingston Western Belt, regarding criminal persons banding together across gangs to carry out these activities. And the process around the investigations are going smoothly to the extent that we have a joint up effort across law enforcement to bring further closure to this matter and results, favorable results, as we seek to pursue other persons who we believe are involved in it. Man killed a pre-birthday celebration is said to have been wanted. A man was wanted by the police for allegedly sexual assaulting a teenager on her birthday three years ago was shot and killed at his pre-birthday party in Truro District, West Moreland, on Friday night. Leon Anglin, 33, also known as Rusty and Chin, a resident of Truro, was set to celebrate his 34th birthday tomorrow, but had decided to host a pre-birthday event. Anglin and his friends were reportedly having a good time when two men drove upon a motorcycle. One of the men reportedly alighted from the motorcycle and began walking in the direction of Anglin. The man suddenly pulled a gun from his waistband and opened fire, hitting Anglin and another man multiple times. The shooter then jumped back on the motorcycle, which sped away. A police team which responded to the shooting transported the two injured men to the hospital where Anglin was pronounced dead. The other man was admitted in serious condition. In the October 2021 incident in which Anglin was implicated, a female student was reportedly on her way home from a surprise birthday party which her friends had staged for her. She was allegedly accosted by Anglin who tried to coerce her into having sex with him but she refused. 
He reportedly dragged her behind the building and he sexually assaulted her. The matter was reported to the police, but before Anglin could be caught, the teenager, who was badly traumatized by the incident, was removed from the community by her family. She was later sent overseas, where she is said to be completing her education. JBN will keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.